anymore. And they'll be like, you work out every day for an hour. I'm like, yeah, damn right. Every day I do something physical every day for an hour. And, and you know something? I would spend two more on top of that if science said it was healthy. But unfortunately, stupid science says it's not healthy. So I don't do that. Hey team, it's Mike here at After 40 Fitness and After40Fitness.ca. I thought I'd have a little fun with this one. Let's talk about uh, 10 things that if you're not in keto, let's call them non-ketonians or non-Atkins people, just don't get about our way of eating. Let's have some fun with that, okay, you ready? If this is your first time in my channel, however, or you haven't yet, please do subscribe. Uh, if you enjoy this content, talking about low carb, the keto space, the Atkins space, uh, it could be about intermittent fasting, some workouts, some hit style stuff, make sure you smash that like button and do subscribe. And number one, believe it or not, is that you just can't eat what you want to eat. Oh, I know. It's so funny, eh? In fact, we have to train. Think about it. We have to train our brain to like certain things and dislike other things. Uh, you can't eat this. You can't eat that. You can't eat the other. In fact, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You can't have that Snickers bar. You can't eat that cake that you're so used to eating. Now, I got to tell you this. I, I will say this. It, if there is a benefit to going Atkins or keto, and it's that after about three or four weeks, of not having sugar, of not having cake, I, I kid you not, your body kind of forgets. It kind of forgets what it's like to have that sugar, what it tastes like. So thank God there are some benefits in the long term, but in the short term, oh my God, uh, is it not like frankly an eating disorder telling you what you can and can't have? It very much is an elimination diet trying to go low carb. Well, of, co of course it is. If you're going from a couple hundred, three, four hundred calories, or sorry, grams of carbs per day down to what, sub 25? <laughs> That's an eating disorder. Uh, in fact, you know something, I get to the point sometimes, in fact, early on in my journey, where I would just, like, almost go into a rage that, oh my God, if you put a bucket of ice cream in front of me, I kid you not, like I'd make love to it. No, I actually wouldn't because I'd be kind of weird, but um, make no mistake, uh, I would jones for ice cream. Ice cream by far is my nemesis, you have yours. Uh, and you know, I gotta tell you something, it really makes no sense because when I look at ice cream, what is it, like frozen milk solids? Uh, no, it really is much more than that, isn't it? But you get my point. So um, you have to really come to terms with that keto is or Atkins is binary. Uh, if you do want to be lean, fit, and or healthy, healthy, then you have got to give up crapahydrate. Crapahydrates? I like that word, crapahydrate. You got to give up crap. You got to give up anything that's white, anything that's processed, anything that's bleached. Right? White flour, white sugar being our mortal enemies. And so uh, did you notice, by the way, that I did say if you want to be lean, fit, and healthy? Okay, that's another thing that we've got to come to terms with. Is that does mean some exercise. That does mean some resistance training. Uh, otherwise, you get healthy. I don't mind telling you, you, you will get healthy on the Keto Atkins lifestyle minus the exercise, but you won't be lean or fit. Number two is that, you know, <laughs> we're never really satisfied. I mean... Hands up if you've been keto or Atkins or low carb for a long time and you look in the mirror and you go, oh my God, there it is. Like I've done it. I'm perfect. Praise Jesus. I am the personification of perfect physical fitness. Yeah, hand down. Who am I kidding? Um, so heck no. Not just no, but heck no. I mean, you look in the mirror and you go, geez, I mean, no matter how long you've been on keto or Atkins, you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, I could be leaner. Uh, I could be more striated, right? I could have less of a fat bum. I could have less of that, you know, midsection. I mean, I like my leanness and I still don't have a, an, an etched six pack, right? I like some vascularity now, you may say to yourself. And so, you know, I, I got to say there's probably this 1%, let's call it 1% of the population who really truly reaches nirvana, right? They, they look at themselves in the mirror, they show off all the time because they've got that ideal physique, but it's 1%. And I'm going to tell you something, they're typically in their 20s, right? They typically have no responsibilities. They can live in the gym and focus on their health and fitness and do nothing else. Um, they might even enhance, if you know what I mean. But for the you and I, the regular 99%, it's never going to happen. In fact, because we're aging, the goal line moves, doesn't it? I mean, it's a vicious circle. Uh, it's like that dangling carrot in front of the donkey analogy, right? You know, every time the donkey reaches for it, it keeps moving away, right? Well, that's perfection as far as our physique goes for us. And not to mention, if you're in the keto low carb space anyway, you can't even have the carrot because it's got too much sugar. So there's that. Anyway, uh, I walk this walk with you guys as well, folks. And so I don't look like I want to look, despite being off and on for two decades, first Atkins and now keto. Um, so the question really is, why are we doing this nonsense? And it's not nonsense because you and I both know the alternative. It's to have 
no physique whatsoever, poor health, inflammation, aching joints, sore, stiff, fatigue, lethargy, right? A big bum, big gut. I mean, what, what is the other option? And so because of that, because we know the alternative, even though we'll never reach nirvana, we stay the course. Number three is what happens like right within our little click uh, and it's other ketonians, it's other Atkins people, Atkinsers uh, or low carbers. Uh, you know, it's funny because to me, they're like uh, gym rats in the gym. But you know what I mean? That you've got these people that walk around the gym. If you go to a gym, the gym bros, they walk around, they give themselves, they give everyone advice. They're constantly looking in the mirror, they're constantly checking themselves in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> more often than not, they don't wear deodorant. Uh, they grunt all the time. Uh, they put on like 400 pounds just so they can move each rep like an inch. Oh my God, it's so silly. And Keto and Atkins has these people as well. I mean, I call them pompous and pedantic and pontificating and pretentious. Uh, just because if you ask me, uh, they just love to give advice. They love to give their opinion, love to tell you when you're wrong. Uh, they think that their opinion is, you know, fact. It's the truth. And if you disagree with them, well, then you can't help but be wrong. Uh, so in the keto space, we call them the keto police. Right, or Atkins police, because all they want to do is go around and give out tickets. If they had the ability, I mean, son of a... Anyway, um, I don't know why we can't all just get along. Uh, in fact, you know, it's even worse than that because they tend to be what we call strict. In the keto space, we call them strict. And because they're strict, they've taken this, um, the definition of keto, and they've made it mean more. So if you look up the definition of a ketogenic diet in you know, Google or Wikipedia, you're going to see that it's a diet, a low-carb diet that resembles Atkins, that results in a state, a metabolic state called ketosis, right? You produce ketones. That's the definition. But strict ketonians have taken it one step further to mean that you must also do it healthy. You must avoid anything that's potentially inflammatory. You can't have anything processed, uh, you know, zero sugar, even though that's the definition of, car of uh, carnivore, um, right? So they've added on all these layers on top of the definition of a ketogenic diet. But then, even worse, now they've turned around and they've labeled the rest of us that don't follow that plan. And the labels are just horrendous. They call us either dirty keto or lazy keto, all right? You can tell that someone strict came up with those terms because they're so damn condescending. Dirty and lazy, Pfft, I refuse to go by either, right? When, when someone says, what manner of keto do you do? I say it's flexible. It's flexible keto because I refuse to give in to those condescending terms. Anyway, why can't we all get along? You know, it's, it's even worse. And I'll tell you what I mean by that is I'll tell people that um, I now allow myself about 50 grams a day of carbs. That I can go as high as 50. In fact, I can go as high as 70 before my keto vibe, my ketones are impacted. But I'll say I'm about 50 and then someone will throw back and go, well, you're not keto, you're low carb. Screw you. I am in ketosis. I am between 0.5 and 1 millimole every day at 50 grams. Who are you to tell me that I'm not ketotic? So stupid, right? This, ah, oh, the mentality. But for some silly reason, a lot of critiquing goes on in that space. Okay, I wish we would just get over that. Number four, let's talk about food prep. Do you do food prep of some kind for the week? Well, if you're like me, then you take Sunday evening and you do some food prep. You plan out the week, you set out a bit of a schedule, which days are gonna be intermittent fasting, which days are not, which days you're gonna fasten right off the entire day, which for me is typically Mondays. I like to take Mondays off from food entirely. Uh, but man, if you've ever seen, if you, <laughs> I should do a video on my Sunday evening because it's like hell night in the uh, rubber shooting household, cooking and, and planning and prepping and storing stuff for the rest of the week. Uh, again, it's decisions. Uh, any kind of a, to me, a serious diet and fitness program needs a plan. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, especially the one about starting any diet or fitness program, then you know I'm all about goals. And not just goals, but SMART goals. S-M-R-T. -S -M <laughs> oh my God, I got to show a video clip about that. So in order to, for them to be achievable and realistic, I think it's worth setting aside some time to, to not only create a plan, but then work the plan, which to me includes meal prep. And that's the execution part of a plan to me is making those things happen. And the result is, let's face it, less room for error. See, some of you will have a, a challenge to your willpower midweek when it comes to dinner and you're not prepped. Well, now what should I do? Maybe I'll just go to Burger King or Dairy Queen or, or McDonald's. So to me, a lot of effort, a lot of decisions a lot of planning goes into being fit and healthy. And the people who don't get it just, man, really don't get it. And they won't get that meal prep may just be part of your lifestyle now too. Uh, you'll hear people say stuff like you're avoiding carbs. Why would you avoid carbs? Carbs are like essential. You gotta have carbs. The brain needs carbs. Oh, people just don't get it. But it's even worse than that. I mean, you consider people who have some impact, 
some people who are out there in the public space. Um, influencers is another way to describe them. I'll give you an example. Just one that comes to mind. Uh, Jillian Michaels just the other day had an interview in People Magazine where she said that keto, she actually talked about keto specifically, was an, entirely negative, by the way. Uh, and she said it has a bad impact on thyroid, on liver, on kidneys. I mean, never mind that all the evidence says otherwise in a healthy individual that unless you have compromised functionality of one of those, that sure, there's some considerations there, but for the remaining part of the population who don't have kidney and liver disease, it's nothing but beneficial. D doesn't stop Jillian Michaels from bashing it though. Like unbelievable, when people don't get it, they just don't get it. See, and, and another, here's another example. Why are you drinking sand? I'm not drinking sand. I'm gonna put in protein in my smoothie. It's a protein shake. Oh my God, geez Louise. Like. Can you imagine drinking sand? So um, I, the other one I get periodically when I talk to people about you know doing keto is, is it true that you eat bacon and eggs every day? No, but a lot of days I love bacon and eggs. I could break every fast with bacon and eggs if I had a choice. And yet all that saturated fat and all those egg yolks and all that bacon grease, oh, so good. I love it, love it. So there's a bit of a paradox here, right? Um, if you try to avoid things that are white, that are processed, somehow that's unhealthy. And yet these same detractors what do they have for vices? Some of them drink, some of them smoke, some stay up late and party, you know, all hours of the night. They got all these vices. Um, and yet somehow, I mean, they're not getting enough sleep. They're under stress, but somehow they're the cool ones. I'm really curious how, how that happened, right? How did I, sitting over here, eating my bacon and eggs and pumping out, you know, weights in the corner or doing a hit workout, slinging the sledgehammer or flipping tires, how did I become the asshole here? I, I just don't get it. And, and they're the cool one. Yeah. Anyway, so what's different though between those two lines of, of reasoning is when I see someone eating white toast, when I see someone chugging a few beers, right? Uh, I see someone having Kraft macaroni and hot dogs. You know what I don't do? I don't berate them. I don't walk over and go, man, you're really unhealthy. Like, well, what the hell are you doing? I don't thumb my nose at anyone ever, but and they'll be like, you work out every day for an hour. I'm like, yeah, damn right. Every day I do something physical every day for an hour. And you know something? I would spend two more on top of that if science said it was healthy, but unfortunately stupid science says it's not healthy. So I don't do that. Number six, you know, carbs are everywhere. You just can't help but count carbs. You can't help but count macros everywhere you go. They rule you. In every situation with everything you, that, that goes into your mouth, you have to have extra, in fact, you develop x-ray vision. You're gonna need to know and you'll be able to pick out how many grams of carbs, how many grams of fat, and how many grams of protein. You know, and even when you're not sticking to the plan, even if it's you're like my regimen where you have these planned refeed days, and you get to know your macros. You get to know, by extension, the calories of everything you ingest. See, I'm, I'm, it's one of those Saturdays for me, and I'm downing my large blizzard. Oh, it's so good. It's delightful. It really is. But you know, it's, it's the large. So I know that it's got 1,140 calories in a large DQ blizzard. In fact, I even know more than that. I even know that it's 55% carbs. It's 39% fat. It's got like six grams of, of protein, so there is that. But even though it's my refi day, I'm, I'm ingesting all these carbs and it's part of my regimen, so I have to do it. If I don't do it, if I don't have my refi, I'm, I'm, I'm actually breaking my plan, my diet regimen. But you know, I'm, I'm eating this blizzard and I'm loving it and I'm sobbing in my ice cream because I know how many grams of carbs I'm ingesting. And so, you know, if I wasn't happily married to my wife, man, I'd marry that DQ blizzard. No, I wouldn't. That, again, that'd be weird. But I'm sobbing in it, so the salt is going into it. You know, that, that's enhancing the flavor. So now I'm, I'm even more guilty. Like it's just ugh, a never-ending cycle. It's almost a, an eating disorder. <laughs> it's almost an eating disorder. I think when I, you know, you see me sobbing into my blizzard as I thoroughly love it. Uh, yeah, that looks like an eating disorder. But you should see me at the grocery too. And I'll be picking out something that's that I can have so it's good for the family as well. And I'm holding up, I kid you not, I'm reaching into the into the cooler and I'm holding up bags of breaded chicken. And this one's got like 22 grams because of the breading, 22 grams of carbs per serving. And this one's got 16 and that one's got 12. Well, guess what? Winner, winner. I'm going with the 12. But I feel like a friggin' retard holding up the bags in the grocery aisle, reading the ingredients list. I'm sure people go, you know, walking by going, what are you doing? You look silly. Uh, meanwhile, I'm arguing in my head over what? Over like four grams of carbs. I'm arguing in my head over like 16 calories, right? Talk about ridiculous. So uh, it's one step further than that, actually. It's really funny that someone on my team will call me. They'll be out for dinner. Now, here's an example. One of them called me up a couple days ago and said, you know, I'm, out for, I'm out for dinner with my family. I'm sitting here at Montana's. I'm going to order keto. I'm going to have the ribs with the steamed vegetables on the side. But it comes with like a Texas bold sauce on the ribs. Is that okay? How many carbs are in that, Mike? Uh, 
And I just so badly want to smack him up the side of the head and say, dude, just enjoy it. I love your dinner. Spend great time with your family. Enjoy yourselves. And don't sweat the couple of grams of sugar that's in a little bit of barbecue sauce. Oh my God, like don't even sweat that. Just have fun with the family and don't worry about it. I'll see you tomorrow morning and we're gonna have a killer hit boot camp and you're gonna get just swole. You're gonna have a massive pump on because those couple of grams of glucose are turning into muscle glycogen and you're gonna love it. Number seven is you get to be the role model, like all the time. You're the role model always. Uh, and this may not apply as much to me anymore as now that I have refeeds because people see me regularly, like twice a month, ingesting carbohydrates. But if this applies to you, then uh, you, my loyal listeners, you know exactly where I'm coming from because this could be like midweek. Let's suppose it's a Wednesday and you're out and about in a social event and you elect to have something carby. Uh, like watch out. Your friends, right, none of whom are probably health conscious, right, not in any way, shape or form, they will look at you like you just revealed yourself to be like an alien, like from outer space, like from Mars. <laughs> One of those three things because they're all different. Uh, but, you know, occasionally, I'll give you an example. Occasionally, my refeeds will fall on a, a party, an anniversary, a, a wedding, a birthday party. And uh, my family, my friends will see me like gorge on cake and ice cream, like three servings of each. And they'll be like, oh, my God, you're having, Mike, you're having ice cream. Yeah, exactly right. And why is that an issue? So what if for the next 25 minutes, I don't give a crap about my diet? Like, oh, my God, don't make a big deal or, or make a big deal of it. I should be prepared for it. I think it's also partly because if you're like me, you become a role mo model of health to your friends and family, whether you like it or not. Right? Without even trying, you become like the go-to person in your circle for health, fitness, keto, Atkins, low carb related questions. In which case, when people see you deviate from your plan, oh my God, then you know they somehow feel the need to make a big deal of it. All right, so, oh, well, uh, just, I, if anything, I would say be flattered that you get to be the role model in your circle. Uh, just don't be surprised when you get called out because of it. Number eight is, uh, I'm going to refer to them as keto police. This kind of ties back to number three about strict ketonians, but I'm going to make a different application right now. And it's about this phrase that I love to hear keto police say that we're all different. Um, you know, we're all different. Something affects me differently than you. And this is almost used like a get out of jail free card. So uh, I'll give you an example. When I quote science, when I use a study to, to drive home a point, it could be about protein, it could be about sucralose. Here's a good example. Um, that'll come up occasionally and I'll comment based on the science that there is zero science that sucralose and the trace amounts, right, the milligrams that are present in an ice water or a sugar-free monster that in any study ever impacts serum glucose, serum insulin and serum ketones in those who follow ketone uh, ketosis or the Atkins way of eating, and you know, and I'll say that like in keto, in those ketotic, there's no evidence that there's an impact. The only impact ever shown uh, to have a cephalic response to sucrose, and I have a whole video on this. I'll put the link below. Uh, is in people who follow a SAD diet, since they, you know, when they taste something sweet, their body has been trained to expect calories. Not so in ketonians, and so, and even in that case, even in obese pre-diabetic followers of Assad, that cephalic response to sucrose was only 40%. This is in studies. And someone, anyway, I'll make those comments about science and studies, and some poor soul will say, yeah, but I'm different than you, Mike. I'm different than you. My body reacts differently because everyone reacts differently to ingredients. Like such a friggin' cop-out. So I'm going to clear that up for you right now. I'm going to make a, a point here that I think you'll, by the time you think about it later, you'll go, you know something? He's probably right. See, when it comes to this individuality, it pertains to impact, level of impact of a, of a substance. So for, let's stick with sucralose, right? We already established this one as kind of a baseline. So sucralose doesn't in ketonians appear to have any response ever, right? So it's not that you react differently to me. It appears that there is no response in those of us who are low carb keto. The reason for that is because the body is too smart. Dr. Ben Bickman did some work on this where he established that because we've already got a baseline, a homeostatic level of glucose, we can't afford ketonians can't afford to have any kind of an insulinic response to sucralose because that would drive our fasted glucose level down into hypoglycemic ranges, right? Because we don't ingest carbs. When you have in, you know, an inflow of carbs, then who cares if sucralose causes an insulinic response because you've got carbs that need to come down to a homeostatic level, back to your fasted level. But in the absence of those carbs, how stupid do you think the body is that it's going to make you hypoglycemic? It, it's, that doesn't happen and no study endorses that. Now, where the individuality comes in, let's take, for example, coffee. 
okay? Everyone has a cortisol response to coffee. The amount of the cortisol response is individual. Some people can ingest ice cream and the sugar in it will take them from an example of let's say a fasted glucose of 80 and it'll take them to 140. Someone else will have a, that same amount of sugar and their glucose will go from 80 to 210, all right? That's the individual response. Everybody responds to glucose. Everyone responds to sugar, but the amount of the variation, there isn't one person on the planet who can ingest an ice cream and not have their glucose response. So you know, there's the individuality at test. If you were able to turn to me and say, Mike, I just ate that large blizzard, 1140 calories of which 60% is carbs. And guess what? I have a constant glucose monitor going and my glucose didn't budge. It stayed at flatlined 80. Okay, now you got a point. Now, uh, man, I love it. I love it. I will, uh, I'll change my stance all day, every day. I will talk about epigenetics and how, oh my God, the impact is completely individual, right? Whether someone even has an impact. And that's when I talk about sucralose or I talk about too much protein, right? We have got to get thinking in our heads about our enhanced metabolic state of being ketotic. It makes such a difference. And so when people talk about this variation, I, I can't help but say, oh my God, they kiss my ass. You have no idea of what you're talking about. You have no idea when you use that cop out of we're all different, we all react differently. It, yes, again, I'll say it one more time, in levels of response. Not in whether there's a response or not. Okay, No science proves that, none whatsoever. Uh, number nine. Number nine is that the people, there are people who don't think you need to move weight, resistance train, to lose weight. I mean, unbelievable in 2020 with all the science showing the features and benefits of resistance training that people will still argue that you don't need to exercise to lose weight. Okay, all right, let me stop for a second because there is some truth to that. You absolutely don't need to work out to lose weight. Uh, however, as long as you're okay with that losing weight, not just being fat, but also being muscle, it's 100% true. Uh, I love to talk about this. It's one of my favorite topics that you do not on any calorie restricted diet want to lose muscle and yet you will. And there's only two ways to prevent it. One is to up your protein, to always hit your protein macro, and if not, perhaps even exceed it by 10 or 15%. But B, resistance training. You must stimulate muscle growth to at least hold what you've got, if not potentially add a few ounces or a pound a year. So this, this also can reply back very quickly to finish this one off. Reply back to those strict ketonians I talked about, the keto police. See, remember I said to you that they will, they will cut out foods because they're potentially unhealthy. I air quote, unhealthy. Potentially unhealthy. However, no one argues that exercise isn't healthy. Everyone agrees. It is universally true that while you don't need to exercise to lose weight, that the health benefits are clear. And yet those same people will say, no, 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 you don't need to exercise to lose weight. You don't need to exercise to be effective in keto or Atkins. I mean, there's a word for that. Uh, help me out. What's the word for that? That's called being a hypocrite. That's hypocritical. All right, I dealt with that. And last number 10, I'm going to use this phrase. If you haven't heard this yet, you'll enjoy it. You'll come across it. And it's that keto isn't a diet. Keto is a way of life and or a way of eating. You made me see the acronym W-O-E, a way of eating. Uh, honestly, I call that just utter nonsense. It's, it's BS. Um, see, so yeah, I'll tell you what I mean. I'm going to show up here the definition of a diet. And you'll see that there's two definitions. Uh, number two, first of all, is a special course of food to which one restricts themselves to lose weight or for medical reasons, right? So a special course, that's when you hear the word diet. Do you not normally think of that? I'm going on a diet. I'm going to diet so I can lose some weight. I'm going to do the keto or the Atkins diet or the paleo diet or the vegan diet, okay? And we often in our heads think of number two. But notice number one, the kinds of food that a person, animal, or community habitually eats, all right? So habitually eats doesn't mean you're doing anything exceptional or anything out of the ordinary. In fact, do we not just call it, you hear me refer to it all the time as the SAD, the standard American diet, or by extension, the standard Canadian diet. Well, that's what the entire country eats on a daily basis. The entire U.S. eats the standard American diet or the standard Western diet. So when people lose their shit over someone using the word diet, I mean, holy Hannah, jump into any forum and talk to anyone who's a keto practitioner, particularly the strict, again, we're back to the keto police mantra, uh, then they'll use the word diet. You lose, if you use the word diet, they will lose their minds. Well, then everyone loses their minds. I mean, oh my God, it's not a diet. It's a way of eating. A diet isn't sustainable. Damn right. Damn right. But to think that just because, you know, we play with semantics and we call it the keto way of eating is going to make it more sustainable. How silly. All right. Now, this also has a second part to it. And the second part is, uh, it's really cool how in the keto space, uh, I think we're the only diet regimen or the 
only way of eating. Fine, I'll play along. Where we've taken on this challenge to make everything that we couldn't have available or we can't have available uh, in the keto space to somehow make it available. I'll tell you what I mean. Um, every day I see postings for different ways to make keto cakes, uh, to make keto pies, keto pasta, keto fries, keto tacos, keto bread, keto pizza, and keto ice cream. By the way, it sucks. It's, it's a, I shouldn't say that. It's decent. It's not the same as a DQ blizzard. <laughs> yes. This has caught on as a good idea. So I guess where I'm going with this. So I'll, let me paraphrase you how I, how I see this. We recognize that these foods were problematic for us, right? Cupcakes and cakes and ice cream and pizza. We recognize that they caused cravings. Um, they made us binge eat. They put on weight. But not only do I not want to give them up, I'm going to try to figure out how to fit them in, in my regimen, but I'm still going to expect not to have the hunger, not to have the cravings, not to binge eat, right? Well, I got to tell you something, color me skeptical. I personally just don't get that. I think that's playing with your psychology. And so personally, I just avoid them all, right? Uh, other than those two days, and that's why I have those two days a month. So I don't have to play these games with my head throughout the week and fight cravings and hunger. Uh, but that's just me. On that note, folks, there's the 10 things I dislike that exist in the keto space. If any of those rung a bell with you, great. And the best comments, I always turn to videos like this one. Please do smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. On that note, I'll see you in the next one.